uh, and this is a good good sort of pipe for if you're beginning, you know, rather than uh, rather than dropping like that, um, which is unnecessary. Try and land, try and land with the legs, uh, you know, fairly not straight but fairly straight. Like that. Yeah. yeah, you use the muscles, you've trained the muscles. I mean, you can really, you can feel your own landing. If you, everyone try it from up here. You can feel your own landing. Just listen to how quiet your landing is. And just, just practice that. And and if you try it a few times, you'll see, you'll see that sometimes it's quiet and sometimes it's not. And the quiet ones are good ones. And the louder ones are bad. I can you say a little about why the white ones are like better than the loud ones? Yeah, yeah. because as, as my friend Scott Turner would say, uh, silence demonstrates muscular efficiency. So when you're doing something, if it's quiet, it means your muscles are, are you're using your muscles a lot more. Um, and you're absorbing it in a chain of muscles, mu uh, uh, like a kinetic chain in the muscles. So when you land, the muscles in the foot start to take it and they transfer it to the muscles in the ankle which then transfers it up the calf and into the, the muscles around here and into the quads. So that chain, the whole chain absorbs it. Whereas if you land flat footed, um, there's, no, there's no muscle here. No muscles absorbing it now. It's going straight into the heel, which goes, the shock goes into the joints and the lower back. And it's loud and that's damaging the skeleton. So what you need is to, be, is to let the, the whole chain take it really well. And you just have to, that's a sensitivity thing. It has to do with neuromuscular connections, really, and how fast they work. And the only way they learn to work fast is through repetition of training. So that's why you, when you begin, you find a wall like that, and you jump off it 100 times. Just land, come back, land, come back, land. And that slowly builds the, 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 me, the muscle memory, really, uh, and the nerve, nervous connections, so they fire really quickly. So when you do land, Right, as soon as you land, they're on it. They're, they're absorbing the impact, rather than being a little bit delayed, so that you land, the impact goes in, and then they realise, oh shit, I've got to take it. <laughs> it's too late, you know. If it's just a millisecond too late, it's too late. It's like with the roll. If you land and there's a pause, you know, if you do a big jump and come down, and then roll, you may as well not roll. You're only doing it to look good, and it's totally useless um, because the impact has already gone shock into the body. So the, the roll has to be as soon as you touch the ground. If it's not, then uh, it's not doing anything for you. And that again, it has to just be trained. So the legs are sensitive enough so that as soon as they touch the ground, they drop into the roll rather than going and then roll. There's a subtle difference, but it makes a difference between training for 10 years, for 15 years and 20 years like the Yamakasi, and still being strong, being stronger and training for three or four years and you know, limping around and having to stop training because you can't, your knees are bad or your ankles are bad or whatever, which is very common, very common. So, so for rolling on concrete, how do you, uh, a lot of people have trouble rolling on concrete and don't really know how to learn without bruising themselves after three or four tries. What do you suggest? Yeah, I mean, if you roll well, you can roll on any surface and it will make no difference to you. You won't feel it any different rolling on concrete or rolling on a mat or anything. Uh, so, so, learning to roll well is the key. Uh, so I suggest not just if you're a beginner, don't start on concrete. Start rolling on, but again, I wouldn't say start on a mat. I'd say start on grass or soil, something like that, something that's still real and hasn't got a lot of give. Because rolling on a mat, you don't learn a lot. You know, anyone can roll on a mat. You can roll on a mat badly and you won't feel anything. So it won't teach you anything. Whereas if you roll on normal surfaces badly, you will feel it and that teaches you something. You then think, oh, I need to adjust my position because it hurt me here or hurt me here. So, but the only way to get used to, um, the only way to develop a good roll is to do lots and lots of rolls so your body really learns. Because every roll is slightly different because your anatomy is slightly different from everyone else's. So there is, there is a structure to a roll, there is a technique to rolling. But everyone's just slightly different. And the only way you can learn that is from doing lots of rolls. There's no short, I mean, like we say in parkour a lot, there's no shortcuts, there's no secrets, there's no shortcuts. It's just training, lots of regular training, the basics, hard training, and that will lead you to where you want to be. It will give you results. Because, you know, we've seen, uh, we, we know that works, it's not speculation. The guys that have trained like that have been around, you know, they're, they're now in their late 30s, the Yamak, and, and they're the strongest. That, that we know and they're very capable physically and they've been doing this 20 years so they know that it works whereas other forms of training 
that, that skip that stuff, we know it doesn't work because those guys all have injuries. And so it's up to you. If you want to go and have a couple of years of, you know, big jumps and all that sort of stuff, and then, uh, and then quit and go and play uh, chess or something, um, <laughs> which is fine, it's a good game, uh, then that's cool, do that. But if you want to train for your whole life, uh, you know, to be and to last, which is the whole point, then don't do that because it won't work. You'll, you'll burn out pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so work, really work the basics first and just the repetition. And, you know, repetition creates reaction. That's, that's the phrase to remember, is that your body will do what you train. So if you train over and over in the right way, good landings, good rolls, um, everything really silent, everything quiet, everything dynamic, then your body will do that when you move. Whereas if you don't do that when you train, if, if you train and you're happy to accept sloppy landings, loud bangs, you know, you shake when you land. Uh, if you're happy to accept that in your training, then when you really move, you'll also move like that. And if you add a bit more height into those drops, then suddenly you've got twisted ankles, broken knees, cruciate ligaments, all that stuff happens. So, uh, have you ever broken any bones? Yeah, I broke my arm about five years ago. Um, but, uh, and it was from nothing big, you know, it was from, um, and all the injuries that all the, all the experienced guys have got are never from any big movements. Because when you do the big ones, you can't afford to mess up, so you're really focused. So it's, it's, all, it's always on very small moves. Something you've done a thousand times, little volts, you know, but you're just not concentrating. Maybe, I oh, know I wasn't that day, and just slip, <laughs> pull about eight foot of concrete. Um, so, and it was on a move I'd done yeah, a thousand times on a run. So, the little things are where you get injured. That's why you should really try and everything you do really focused, even when you're just sort of playing around in a way, you know, really be careful because it's always then that people get injured. We've seen that. It's very rarely on really big stuff that people get injured. So, but it doesn't mean the big stuff isn't dangerous. It just means that when you do it, you're more, you, know, you, you have to get it right. You have to, you have to know you can get it right. Uh, Dan, I got a quick question. When it comes to like shoes like these, the vibrant, yeah. have you guys heard of them? Yeah, yeah, we've got them over there. I've never used them. Um, we've been offered to use them by the company want to want us to want to sponsor or whatever. But and they're, they're, I think they're probably very good for um, a few guys use them for like balance training and sensitivity stuff. You know, yeah. obviously not so good for big drops for big jumps or, yeah. or, or, or move. You know, fast dynamic movement. But for sensitivity and balance training, I think they're probably pretty cool. I've never used them. Before. They're very, they're very comfortable. Um, but I was just when you made regard to uh, the rolls, yeah. doing them on soft crash pad, yeah. rather than like something that's more real. Yeah. I guess these would be somewhat similar to that. Like it teaches you when you got when you're learning to take a jump or yeah. like that. You've got too much cushion. Yeah, exactly. It's only it almost can let you be sloppy. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's a good. Um, that's why barefoot training is sometimes good. I don't know if any of you do training barefoot. No. It's, it's good. I mean, that's that's one yeah. step away from barefoot. Yeah. Barefoot is really good because it trains the uh, it trains the sensitivity much more, and you really learn. You know, much more careful because up there, you know, if you've got big shoes, you know, nice big trainers on, you won't think anything of just running and jumping, <laughs> landing and rolling. But if you're barefoot, you'll think about it. You know? <laughs> um, uh, and and that's really very good. That yeah, really that trains you to. To, you push your limits barefoot, and, you, and your feet become much stronger. The muscles in the feet become really strong um, and sensitive and, and uh, adaptable. And then when you put a shoe on, it, everything's really easy because you've now got this extra cushioning. You think, oh shit, you know, I can I can do this jump easier. Yeah. So it's a really good thing to do barefoot training and barefoot running. Just running barefoot is a really good way to strengthen the feet. Um, that's good for the arch. Don't do too much of it when you've when you've got arch problems. But um, if you do some barefoot running on grass, uh, it's very good for the arch because it. Because you, uh, or, or, well, yeah, not, not when you've got an arch problem yet, but um, not when you're beginning to, re to rehab. But, you know, shoes don't, you don't use the foot much when you run in a shoe. Because the shoe, the sole takes it all, and your foot stays roughly in the same position. But when you run barefoot, uh, all the muscles in the foot have to work. So, barefoot training is really a good thing to do. I had a question about spins and, and other, other things like that, like palm spins. A lot of people around here don't like to do them because they're not efficient. But the other day at a jam, Tyson, was showing us how you could do like a half palm spin. I'll we'll put you on the spot, Tyson. He's, he's yeah. actually over there. Yeah. <laughs> Big guy. But like, uh, some, some corkscrew pop ups. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So, how do you guys deal with um, uh, tricks and spins? And is there any such thing as an inefficient well, movement that you just don't?